Welcome back everyone. Now it's been a few weeks since my last Flashback Friday video so I'm gonna pick up where I left off by looking back at the 12 inch Star Wars line but I'll be moving away from the episode 1 line that I was looking at last time and moving back to the classic original trilogy to look at Zuckus from The Empire Strikes Back. Although being one of those key bounty hunters we see in The Empire Strikes Back, Zuckus' time on screen is pretty limited and we don't really get to see an awful lot of him. So this is a more obscure character for Hasbro to think about bringing to the 12 inch scale, but also a really cool one because he's very distinctive and quite different to the other figures in the line, which is something I always really appreciate. So I won't waste any more of your time, let's kick off by looking at the packaging. So we can see that this is in the trapezoid shape, so this is a little bit different to what we'd seen in the Star Wars line up until this point or in the videos I've covered so far. This is a little bit of a different shaped box and it is still mostly window display, so of course we can see the figure in all of his glory there, but we'll notice the branding and the logos are a little bit different to what we'd encountered in the past. At the bottom of the packaging we see the Star Wars logo and we see Luke's hand on the lightsaber taken from the original 1977 poster. The star field is still present around the outer packaging uh, but it's a much brighter blue, much more of a twilight than a dark space skyline that we're used to seeing in the star field. The rest is pretty much just this sort of airy fairy blue really. Uh, I'm not quite sure what they were going for here but it does feel a little bit washed out. Although the colours contrast quite nicely with the brown figure inside the packaging, the rest of it just seems a little bit washed out and dull. When we look at the reverse of the packaging again, we can see uh, an all new approach here. We have this sort of greyed out version or blued out version of the character taken from the film, which is quite cool. I quite like that he's overbearing and looking down on the other figures in the collection. I think is uh, quite an interesting approach. It works quite well. It's quite displayable. Uh, we have a little bit of bio about the film and about this particular character, which is fantastic stuff. And at the bottom of the packaging, we see the other figures in this wave. So we can see, of course, we have Django Fett, which is Definitely one I still want to get my hands on because that's a pretty cool figure by all accounts. We also see some other figures from The Empire Strikes Back including the Imperial Officer and of course Dengar the other bounty hunter. So Jango Fett is a little bit of an anomaly in this line which are pretty much themed on one film in particular. But going back to this overall approach I have to say it's bit odd. <laughs> Maybe it's something to do with the passage of time. Maybe at the time it looked a lot better than it does now. Uh, all these years later though I have to say it's a slightly unusual approach and it looks okay but as I said there's just something a little bit wishy-washy about this packaging. I can't think of a better way <laughs> of really articulating what I'm feeling here but it just feels a bit ethereal and, and, and a bit like I don't know like there's not much substance to it I suppose. But upon opening this figure, I have to say I was struck by how cool and different and unique this particular figure is in this series. Once again, we see a lot of unique individual pieces in this release, which is great to see. If we start off by looking at this head sculpt, I think they've done a really nice job. Of course, they haven't recycled this from anywhere before, and I believe this is the only time that Hasbro used it in the 12 inch scale. So I think they've done a pretty nice job for a character that's seen on screen for just a matter of moments and just a handful of frames. And like most of the Star Wars aliens that we see in those films, he's got a very distinctive, very unique, very alien look to him which is really, really cool. And I think they've done a really nice job of replicating that here. And we can see some nice paint washes running through this sculpt as well to really give it a bit more of a texture. Likewise, I really like the various materials they've used on his costume. Of course, he has that sort of plastic headpiece with those tubes which go around his body and into his backpack. He has this sort of central piece as well, this plastic piece covering his torso, which looks pretty nicely sculpted. Of course, there's a lot of brown washes in there as well to give it some of those textures that we were talking about, a bit of detailing, which is very nicely done. But then we have this wonderful faux leather coat underneath which is quite padded and thick as well so it's very nice to the touch but it complements the plastics and the rubbers that we're seeing elsewhere on the figure to make this feel a lot more authentic and rounded so there's a real nice quality to this figure all in all which is quite pleasing to the eye and to the touch. Again, his gauntlets are uniquely sculpted, of course he only has those three chunky fingers there and once again we can see them really trying to capitalise on the sculpt by giving it some decent paint washes just to create that sort of textured, authentic feel which is fantastic. 
if we look underneath his tunic, of course, we can see that he has those standard rubber boots. These seem to be the only thing that have been recycled from other figures. Uh, you all know by this point how I feel about these. Uh, they're impractical, he can't stand in them, <laughs> and uh, they're far too chunky and uh, pretty unsightly. But thankfully, they are hidden beneath his coat for the most part, so I can't really fault it too much. As we know, articulation tends to be somewhat limited with this 12 inch line. Sadly, he doesn't have a ball joint in the head, it is just a straight swivel, so he can move his head from side to side, but to be fair, with a head this big, he was never gonna get a huge range of motion anyway, even if there was a ball joint. Thankfully, the rubber pieces off the helmet are fairly malleable, so they will work with the articulation. There's no hindrance here, which is really good. And he does have ball joints in the shoulder, so those arms will, of course, kick up and out, and I think there is a complementary bicep swivel at the top there that allows the arm to rotate all the way around which is fantastic and there is of course a single joint there that allows the arm to bend to roughly 90 degrees. There's a swivel at the wrist so that wrist can rotate all the way around. There's ball joints in the hips, the legs will kick out to the side and they'll kick forwards and backwards but of course they are going to be hindered by that coat when it's closed. Now sadly he is stuck with the rubber legs which I've never been a fan of but you can kind of click them into place if you want to move them backwards but that's your lot, there's no more articulation. He only comes with one accessory which which is his rifle. I think they've done a really nice job recreating this prop. I think it looks pretty authentic and it's very nice that they've bothered to paint that handle as well. I think that's a nice little touch that gives it a bit more texture and authenticity. And of course, he has no problems holding it. I was actually very surprised by this because he does have a rubber gauntlet there, but it's actually a very tight grip that he's got. And when it is in position, it looks pretty good. Also, I thought it was important to do a quick scale comparison because he's one of the characters who's actually in scale with the others in the series, which is pretty unusual for this line. And as you can see, he's just a little bit shorter there than Mace Windu, who is a standard 12 inch action figure in this line. So you can actually see it's very nice that they've made the attempt to apply some accurate scaling here. So there you have it. I have to say, I actually really, really like this guy. For a character I'm not that familiar with, other than his very brief appearance on screen and appearing in some comic books across the years, there's something about the bounty hunters in The Empire Strikes Back that always has a certain mystique and allure about them, which is, makes them endlessly fascinating. <laughs> and uh, I have to say, they've done a tremendous job with this rendition of him in action figure form. I really like that they've applied that scaling to him. I think they've made a really nice, earnest attempt to give him a a lot of texturing and detailing, giving him a pretty fantastic costume, and I love all the various materials they've used on him. So I'd have to say for me, this is one of the strongest entries in the line, and if you're a collector and you're missing this guy, I have to strongly recommend him. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like, and remember to subscribe as there'll be plenty more videos soon.